Hi guys, Chris here with the Chewy HI13. So this is the new model here, the successor to the very popular Chewy HI12. This time around it's even larger, it's got a 13.5 inch screen in there, 3000 by 2000 resolution. Now it's actually the same panel that's used in the Microsoft Surface Book. I've seen it in person, I've used it, it's a lovely screen, 267 ppi. Other specs include 4 gigabytes of RAM, 64 gigabytes of internal storage, running Windows 10 Home and powered by an Intel Apollo Lake Celeron M3450. So let's check this one out. Just to quickly point out that I got this from Chewy's store, that's why it's got the Chewy label. They're a seller on AliExpress, the official seller for Chewy. Now I don't actually recommend going with them, I recommend going with someone like Gearbest or Banggood because you have the protection of PayPal. With AliExpress, you don't. So I did have to pay taxes, 36 euros almost there. I've got the keyboard, the stylus, and the tablet of course, so let's get it open. So the stylus is called the Hypen H3. And it takes one quadruple A battery. And it looks a little like other pens actually. No, it's a little bit nice I would say there. You can see it's got a little clip there. There's the tablet so it still has the factory wrap on it. If you get one and it hasn't got this plastic wrap around the outside, I would question if it's actually used or not. But it is very common for them to open up these boxes and do their pre-inspection tests that a lot of sellers do so they, they know that they're not actually sending you out a faulty one. So here on the side they do have the label there that states it's got Windows 10 Home and Pro also looks to be a future option there. So maybe we're going to see Windows 10 Pro version hopefully with 6 or 8 gigabytes of RAM and a more powerful chipset in there. Okay so we'll have a look at the keyboard first. A rather flimsy box without much protection. So it looks very similar to the HO12 second generation keyboard there. It's got a 10 pogo pin dock. Metal tabs here. The top of it, that's made out of metal. Reasonable size touchpad. Pressing down there's a little bit of flex there. Good look at the layout. So we do have a shortcut for the brightness which is a thumbs up there. Print screen button also a thumbs up. I like to use a print screen button. And I can see another button there to disable the touchpad. So the keyboard to me, seems to have all the shortcuts we need on there. You notice there are these little rubber feet. That is, in theory, to stop the screen from touching and rubbing up against the keyboard. So on the side there are two USB 2 ports either side. The rear side of the keyboard is made out of plastic. It's a textured matte rubber paint job. What it feels like to me. And then we've got, of course, four rubber feet there. The tablet itself, I'll just get this plastic wrap off it. So it's typical Chewy packaging here. Firstly, I'm going to check out the accessories box on the left. Actually, it feels rather heavy. Okay, that explains why it's so heavy. It's actually got a power brick in it. Now, the output of this, that is 12 volts and 2 amps. And you'll see the connector is Type-C there. So Type-C charging. And then we have a power cable, the plug is EU for me, which is great, being in Spain. And then another cable, which is standard size USB to Type-C again. Okay, so that feels rather heavy as a tablet. And there we go, so large bezels, <laughs> kind of expected this. Uh, they look a little bit larger than the press images, don't they? That tends to happen, the Chinese love to do that. They love to make it just look slightly smaller, those bezels, but not too bad. I mean, it looks very much like the Chewy HI12 there. So we've got a Windows button there on the right. Now looking at the left side, we have a torque screw that holds the front plastic and the glass, the screen portion to the rear alloy housing, then a speaker, a micro SD card slot, the Type-C port for data and charging, a USB 2 port, which is micro USB 2, a microphone or a status LED, HDMI out and then the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack followed up with the second speaker and another torque screw there. On the top the power button and the volume rocker there now they feel pretty solid I mean they're not flimsy they're not moving around in there I've got a feeling they could just be chrome plated plastic buttons. 
On the right side, there are just the two other speakers. We've got four speakers in total on this tablet. Along the bottom of the HI-13, we've got the two slots there for the supports on the keyboard dock and then 10 pin pogo port. So for web cameras, we have a two megapixel one here right at the front and a five megapixel one on the rear that has autofocus. So the magnets when docking, the tablet to the keyboard should take care of this. It should be hopefully easy just to slot it in. That wasn't too hard and you can see that closed down becomes a clamshell, rather heavy. I'll weigh it in just a second, but let's have a look and see how far that screen will actually angle right back. So that's the furthest it will go back and just pushing on that. It's a little bit of a risk there of that tipping and you can see there is some wobble in that. At least the hinge they have used in there is nice and strong at this angle. It is not collapsing by itself under its own weight. That happened with the first generation keyboard on the Chewy HI-12, so it's good to see it's not happening here. This here's down to luck, and it's what I would call the Chinese tablet lottery when it comes to them putting on the screen protectors and the tablet itself as well. You can see here, I've got a bit of dust and a bit of hair or something underneath the screen protector, so that is going to be a slight annoyance to me. Time to break out my scales now and check the weight of it. So the tablet by itself comes in at exactly 1.1 kilos. Now I add the keyboard. That makes it 2 kilos and then the power, little tiny power brick there adds another 180 grams there making that almost 2.2 kilos in total to lug everything around. Thickness of the tablet comes in at 9.86 millimeters. Also looks like right there we have an ambient light sensor. There we go, Chewy's just popped up, so that's good, good sign. Looks like it's going to work. These are the Windows 10 setup languages it comes with on the image. So we've got English, Spanish, French, Russian, Korean, and then Chinese is on there of course. Now you can see that the screen is flickering. That's something going on with me trying to record it. I don't know why it's doing that. I'm not sure if this is pulse width modulation flickering or not at this point. So I managed to get that screen flickering under control by setting the brightness to 100% when it's on lower settings, as I'll show you right now. It gets that flick out. Only on camera, I'm not picking it up and seeing it in person here. That's 25%. 50, 75 doesn't seem to do it as much, and then 100. So we have 3.4 gigabytes of RAM available to us. It seems that Chewy has dedicated 600 megabytes to the GPU. Maybe we might be able to change this in the BIOS. Hopefully we can tweak that back and just leave it at 64 megabytes, and then it can allocate more if it needs it, the internal graphics GPU there. So. Disk drive, Samsung, the 64 gigabyte eMMC. I have no idea, and I actually think this probably won't have a SATA SSD slot on there. So SATA 3 SSD slot, the M2 slot that's on the Lapbook and other Apollo Lakes could actually be missing because I don't think Chewy will want people opening this up. So we've got Intel dual band wireless AC, the 3165 card, which I have found in other systems to be very good. But of course, this having the all metal housing, I'm going to have to test out the range and the speeds we can get out of that. So I'm a little concerned about that because normally with the full metal body, it does affect the signal's strength. Now, Windows activated fine. No problems with that. Uh, the default scaling is 250% for this resolution. And also to point out that touch accuracy seems quite good. I'm having no problems with that. Of course, we've got a larger screen here, so that does make things a little easier. Free available space we get on C drive is 43.5 gigabytes. So not really a lot of space to play around with. At least we do have a micro SD card slot. A quick test of that Samsung eMMC shows that it has very good speeds here. Writes of over 100 megabytes per second are actually very good on this type of storage. Read speeds also excellent there, no problems. Now this will vary from unit to unit. 
Now a close up of the screen here, it's non-laminated, so we've got the glass, a gap, and then the IPS panel below. Luckily that gap isn't as bad as I've seen on other tablets. It's approximately around one millimeter. The screen also has an ambient light sensor, so you can turn on the brightness to be controlled automatically. All you have to do is go into the display settings, and now that will adjust accordingly to your ambient lighting. I've had a quick type on the keyboard. It feels good to me, not bad at all, because it's firm. We've got two millimeters of travel on the keys. And overall, not bad. Quite spacious because it is a 13.5 inch tablet. Touchpad, just wanted to comment that it feels all right. I mean, it's not gonna be the best touchpad you'll ever use. It's definitely not up to that of my Mi Notebook in the background or a MacBook or anything like that. It's a textured plastic, well, matte coated. And yeah, it's fine, it supports gestures. Um, left and right mouse buttons are incorporated within the touchpad there. So this time around we have four speakers on there which hopefully sound better. Gonna test out a tracker that I always test out so I don't get any copyright issues. This is carbon based life forms. 100% volume. So they maxed out around 80 decibels and they sound marginally better than the Chewy HI12 speakers and other tablets because now there's four of them. Tiny, tiny hint of bass in there. I wish they were louder. So overall, flat speakers and really not that good. I have my very simple test here now. Let's connect up an external hard drive to see if it will power it. Some laptops and tablets actually fail this very basic test. Okay, that looks to be working fine. You can see a white light, this means USB 2 speed. So these ports only run at USB 2. If you want USB 3, we're gonna have to use the Type-C port for that. Now the Type-C port, it doesn't come with an adapter in the box, which is a slight annoyance, but you can get them for really cheap. I've got one plugged in right here. Looking good, this is now lit up blue. That means USB 3 speeds. And yes, I'm able to access that. Now this is a tablet of course, so you can pull it out, you don't have to keep it docked in the keyboard, but because it weighs one kilo, it's like the Surface Book when I used it, that it does get tiring quite quickly, but it is very nice to use a tablet of this size, but I don't imagine myself holding on to this, watching a movie, I'd rather have this thing docked. And you can of course flip the tablet around and use it in what's called presentation mode right here. So it acts as a standard keyboard. Now because it has 10 Pogo ports on the dock itself. The USB ports are still fully functioning so you can plug in a mouse and use that if you want some small control over the screen without actually having to use touch. Very quick look now at the stylus. So this one they say has 124 levels of sensitivity. We've got two buttons. So top button there to erase, the lower button to select at least in one note where I am at the moment. Now let's have a look at the pressure level. So lightly touching there, nothing's really happening. Very thin line. The harder I push, of course, the thicker the line is going to get. Now, plastic tip versus plastic screen protector equals scratches everywhere. So that's going to happen. Now, you might want to get a tempered glass protector for that or just remove the screen protector completely if that is going to bother you having scratches everywhere. Now, palm rejection works as soon as the stylus is detected. By the way, it has hover. You can see, hopefully, there the icon. The hover icon is just there. And now I can't do anything. Lift that away and then it's working. The tablet performance in around Windows, it feels fine, it feels smooth and fluid, at least an edge. No problem with the scrolling. Uh, it is just early days yet, so it's just my first hands-on. I will have benchmarks, thermals, further tests will come, of course, in my full final review. And lastly, a test here of Linux. This is Manjaro Linux, and it's working everything. Wireless works, the touchpad works, Touch screen works, but as you can see, everything is tiny. So closing things is gonna be a little harder there because you're not getting that kind of accuracy with the scaling, but I need to go and find the settings to scale everything up. So that's good to see that this is working perfectly fine with Linux. That's the Chewy HI13. My first impressions are very good. Beautiful display, very nice. Three by two aspect ratio, which I like. It's bright, it's sharp. 
Now there was a bit of flicker on camera, but to the naked eye, I can't see that at all. The speakers, that's the con so far that really is the biggest con I would say. They are flat. They have uh, some bass to them, but almost nothing. They're really poor sounding speakers. I really was hoping for more, and I guess I'm a little disappointed with them there. So we don't have any full size USB ports on the left hand side. That's something we did on the previous model, and it's a shame to see Chewy drop that because I do believe that's very practical to have that. At least we do have two full size USB 2 ports on the dock, which is one good thing. Keyboard is good to type on, their touchpad as well, nice, but we do have those annoying Windows 10 gestures like that swipe to minimize it. I keep triggering now and then, but the build of it is good, it's solid, no flex. Overall, their build quality, decent. I've noticed that where the plastic and the alloy rear meet, there is a little bit of a creak now and then just pressing around it, but overall, not too bad. So I will be back with things that I haven't covered and my overall final opinion of this in the full review. So it'll be battery life, gaming, full lot of benchmarks, wireless performance, you name it, I'll try to cover it in greater detail with the final review and hopefully I will see you then. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye for now.